USA versus Russia. Four years ago, this was, of course, the final. And it's a very different USA team than it was last time. And the team from the United States, not the dream team that everybody was banking on. They pulled out about a month before the games began, but certainly a team that's been able to hold its own and are still in, in the running for the gold. Trajan Langdon out of Duke. Michael Hawkins, who has played for Olympiacos, wearing number five, hit some big shots in their quarterfinal win. Kawani Garris also coming off the bench, who now plays in the CBA. A lot of strong players. Wendell Alexis playing in Europe with Alba Berlin. And Jerry King, who really had a, a strong impression in the quarterfinal win. Rudy Tomjanovich has a lot of guns, and this team has shown that they have come here for one thing and one thing only. They want to win the gold. I think there's a certain amount of pressure on them as well to make sure they do win the gold. Uh, America in recent years has come to expect gold. There's the two referees, Ishtok Rems of Slovenia and Paul Chavez of Argentina. Well, talking about pressure, the Russians four years ago in Toronto, a team that entered the tournament without any pressure at all, ended up grabbing silver. It was a young team. Four years later, most of those players are still together. And that makes them a very confident group. There's the starters, no big surprises. Karasev, Kisserin, the big center. Babkov also at guard, Mikhailov and Panov at small forward. The Americans, Hawkins and Sasser with Oliver starting this time. He didn't start in the, in the quarterfinal. Jared King and David Wood, who produced an unbelievable highlight in the quarterfinal with a huge dunk over Italy's seven foot two, uh, Gregor Fushka. He gets a starting spot. Well, the one player there that I look in that starting five for the United States, somebody who has who has something to prove is Sasser. Went to Texas Tech and was drafted into the NBA, but failed to make it. He needs to put on a show. He didn't really shine in the quarterfinal. Rudy Tomjanovich, accompanied by Dell Harris to his left, the coach of the Lakers, Tomjanovich, the, obviously the coach of the Houston Rockets. They've done a good job with their team and he goes deep to his bench, as do the Russians, as we've seen time and again in this tournament. In fact, in the quarterfinal, uh, the Russians found out that it was their bench that uh, really dragged them out of what was looking like a difficult quarterfinal tie. Some of the starters weren't quite up to scratch. Mikhailov uh, was getting into foul trouble. And it was people like uh, Dima Domani and uh, Tikonenko, the experienced Tikonenko, 34 years old. And also Nikita Morganov, who came off and off the bench and did a very good job for them. So certainly plenty of talent all the way down the bench for both teams. The United States defeated Italy to get into this spot, and they survived a last-second three-point attempt from Carlton Myers, which rimmed out. But they may have gone home, or at least played for a lower position. Well, right from the start of this tournament, they've been aware that uh, they are not unbeatable. Second game up, they were beaten by Lithuania. They've not lost since then. And this is almost, uh, an, almost an unbeaten uh, team's game because uh, Russia have not lost in regulation time yet in this tournament. They've been beaten once only, and that was in overtime by Yugoslavia. That's the man, Michael Hawkins, the small point guard that will be running the show for Rudy Tomjanovic. Sergei Belov, famous career, played for the old Soviet Union and won in the controversial game at the 1972 Olympics, won gold with that team. And he is trying to transfer some of that magic to this team. The old USSR has won gold three times, the United States three times. And the tip, and it is the Russians. Now early against Italy, it was Babkov. They went too early on. Let's see if they do that again. Well, in low to Panov, and Panov, shot was knocked away. Ball knocked out of bounds, and Russia keep possession. Well, the officials have, the referees actually have changed, changed their minds and given it back to the United States. David Wood, very dangerous from outside. Jason Sasser. Working against Kisurin. Inside to King, just like in their quarterfinal. And King, just like in the quarterfinal, scores. But there is a foul. The basket will count. 
but a foul called against David Wood. And David Wood, you can just see under there, pulling Kisser in out of the way. The basket still counts. Very much an enforcer. He's been playing very much as an enforcer type, hasn't he? Been, playing like, been playing like Dennis Rodman. Without the tattoos, of course. David Wood, usually known as a outside shooter, but Vasily Karasev, his shot no good, and the United States have a chance to run. Panov fouls Wood. There's the contact. It would appear to be contact anyway. For me, Sergei Panov has had one of the best tournaments out of all the Russian team, though. Jimmy Oliver over to King again. And the big man can't knock it down. Karasev looks to run. Babkov for three. Now it's David Wood's turn, and Wood hits from three. We knew he was dangerous. Well, the United States have shot the ball very well from three-point range in this tournament. Russians working it around. The dump down low to Mihailov. You're going to have to uh, put a bit more body on this guy. Look at that. You can't have him wandering down the key like that. Very good at executing Mikhail Mikhailov. And a very good pass there by Babkov. But again, they are going to him early, just like they did in the quarterfinal. David Wood, about free throw line distance. And again, David Wood. Babkov gets open, uses the glass. Just like in that quarterfinal, Babkov once again is the man netting the early points. Good right against Lithuania. Oh, Karasev smelled that it. one, and he's going in. Shame he didn't dunk it. He can dunk it with a very quick pair of hands, Vasily Karasev. Hawkins, rebound King. Unable to bring it down. Babcock doesn't waste any time and he drains it. Not bad at all. That's eight points in the first 12 that the Russians have got on the board. And he's a long way out on that one. That's a four point shot almost. Sasser drives in, his shot, Sasser continues to struggle. Now the Russians are running. Babkov, Russia leading by seven. And double figures for Babkov already. And Rudy Tomjanovich is gonna get Jimmy King off the bench and get him into the game. Wendell Alexis. And Panov had position but couldn't bring it down. Belov has to like what he sees is the former Fab Fiver from Michigan and last year's CBA Player of the Year checks into the game. Oh, the, in, the entry into Alexis and he draws the foul. Mental breakdown by the Russians. Very sloppy and it's uh, drawn a foul out of Mikhailov as well, which is something they Ill, can ill afford. There's the foul, he's stepping up. Long, long way. Now, Wendell Alexis struggled from early on in his free throw shooting in the quarterfinal game against Italy. He did, and he is now. He did hit two big free throws, however, to, to ice it for the United States. It was strange. He did settle down later on, but um, I guess I think three of his first five, I think it was. Alexis played his college ball at Syracuse. Misses both. But rebound, King, and Jerry King goes to the free throw line. So Russia not boxing out. That's Mikhailov's second foul. Great blue collar worker, but the knock on him is that he can pick up fouls very quickly. And even now, I think Belov must be considering whether to just pull him out for a while. Meanwhile, this guy, King, has to be considered one of the stars 
of the tournament for the United States. He is a wide body. But abysmal free throw shooting taking place for the United States. He does make the second. No sign of Belov uh, bringing anybody off the bench to protect Mikhailov. Shot clock down to 10. Mahailov drives against King, and the big man gets his own rebound. Trapped, forces one up, and it gives the United States a chance to run. Here comes Sasser. Jimmy King looking to Jerry King. The spin uses the glass. Mikhailov here is staying out of, if I was seeing him at the other end. Ill advised, I think you'd have to say that. Babkov draws the foul. The very smart Babkov waited for the contact and then took his shot. And Mikhailov's coming out. In fact, there's the Babkov shot faked and drew the man into the foul, Jimmy King. And uh, Vitaly Nozov, 2 meters 12, one of the tallest players in the, in the tournament, is coming in to spell Mikhailov. Well, Babkov is off to a blinder here tonight. Like you said earlier, last night the veterans really did not show up. And it was the reserves who had to pull them out of some trouble. Those reserves are being presented now. A chance to get into the team which will be playing, you would assume, at the uh, Sydney Olympics. First of all, the European Championships next year, but certainly the Sydney Olympics. Well, Babcock hits all three, and it's back to a seven-point lead. And Nossoff, perhaps in a mismatch, guarding King. The dump to the other King, Jerry, and... The Russians are having a hard time with Mr. King. They'll have a lot, a lot more trouble as well because Nozov is not known for foot speed and King is quite light-footed for a man of his size. Oh, the entry to Kisserin. And he's got another chance for a three-point play. Good strong work down low by Kisserin. Drags a foul out of Jerry King. Inch perfect pass. Well, Evgeny Kisserin, born in Siberia, goes to the line and indeed converts for the three point play and Russia's biggest lead of the night. King to Garris. Oh, Garris goes into the land of the Giants. A lot of confidence in Kawani Garris. Karasev. <laughs> Offensive rebound by Patrick Ten, and the little guard goes up with the big guys. Jimmy King, and Jimmy King, sloppy with the ball, collects himself, gets it over to Jimmy Oliver, and uh, Wendell Alexis. Well, he's claiming it, but I think it was uh, Nozov who dropped it in his own basket, so that should, in fact, go to the American captain. Pass it in. Uh, didn't pull the string, but Nozov, and Nozov is having a hard time. <laughs> Just not quite coming together, the big Vitali. Seems to have got this back, and then that knee gets in the way. Mm. 
The dump into Garrison Nasov. Finally rises to the occasion. Pashitan finds Karasev. Karasev hits the three. That's the block by Nozov. On the other end, big three from Karasev. Not the sort of guy you want to leave alone on the three-point arc. 31 points he had in the, semif in the quarterfinal against Lithuania. Jimmy Oliver from the corner. Well, that's a nice reply from Oliver. Kudalen, spin move. Over to Karasev. And Karasev fouled before the shot, but it looks like he's ready to start taking over. Karasev for three. That's why they've been trying to keep the ball out of his hands. Anything remotely open and he's going to stroke it. Karasev is such a confident player. Juan Garris. Oh, and Karasev. Oh, Karasev was flirting with his third foul, but instead draws the charge. And Garris picks up his third foul. Such a smart player, Karasev, and brave as well. It's his second offensive, fa uh, offensive foul he's created for the Russians on the last two offenses. A lot of American games, you see the biblical signs, John 316. That's not the score. Or a shooting percentage. John is not three for 16 in this one. Oh, uh, Babcock, hey, Babcock shows he's human and misses. United States now, under two minutes. Jimmy King into Jerry King. And Karasev fouled by King. And Karasev, Please. very cagey veteran on that one. Played for the foul there. And I think he got hurt in the process. And he goes, make sure there's going to be contact between himself and Jerry King. But Jerry P King is a big guy. Karasev has drawn three fouls within the space of about 65 seconds. Karasev, who two seasons ago played for FS Pilsen, last season was in Germany with Alba Berlin, has decided to go back to Moscow, where he's going to play for CSKA. That's the team he led in the uh, 1996 Final Four in Europe. That's unusual to see him miss both free throws. Makes you wonder if maybe he is hurting a little bit after that foul. Russia keep possession. And Karasev, that time, forced one, trying to draw the foul. Out of control, wasn't it? Jason Sasser to Alexis. And another foul against... Russia. Tikhonenko managed to set it uh, for his second foul. Timeout. Well, he does like to get to the line. This is it, but follows up his own shot. So the United States regained possession. The drive and good, Jimmy King. Kind of had to let him go through. Can't afford another foul at this stage. So the United States trailing by just a point. And they're going to get the ball back. 
Kudelin finds Tinkaninko, and Tinkaninko blocked by Sasser, but not without a foul. There's a pass from Kudelin. Lots made of him. In fact, he's got uh, what they call the golden arm, a great three-point shooter. But he's also a very good passer of a ball. Well, we talked about Russia shooting free throws well, but they have they have uh, missed the target here lately. Tinkanico snaps that scoreless string from the line, and it's 37-35 here in the final 30 seconds. This is only shooting 58% from the, uh, sorry, 45% from the free throw line. Look at what the states are shooting. Nerves may be coming into play here. Well, Jimmy King has the ball in his hands. I wouldn't bet against Karasev in this situation, but King does find the opening, and King goes to the free throw line. I guess well, Karasev did not want to pick up a third foul. No, Nozov instead has picked up the foul. Uh, only a second, though. King, a great leaper. Played on two of those Michigan teams, which stumbled in the final game of the NCAA tournament. He's now grinding it out in the CBA. And was the MVP, I believe, this was season. Indeed, Grand Rapids. So 10 seconds on the clock. The United States tie it. We'll see a little full court pressure to try to force the Russians into taking a bad shot or prevent them from getting off a shot. And they almost force a turnover. But Tinkaniko now in the open court. And indeed, it does force a turnover. Langdon over to Oliver. To the corner to Sasser. And Sasser shot good. And the United States go into the locker room on a high. Sasser, maybe that'll get him going. Uses the glass, time running out. The United States lead 39 to 37 here on World Basket 98 semifinal against Russia. Mihailov, who sat down for most of the first half in foul trouble. Well, not foul trouble, but with two fouls is back in, jumping up against Gerard King. And the Americans win the tip. Russia started Kudelin instead of Babkov at the start of the second half. Babkov the top scorer as well. Sasser. And Sasser tries to duplicate the feat, which gave the Americans the lead. Jimmy Oliver kicks it over to Wood. That's his second three. And the U.S. have their biggest lead of the game, 42-37. It's David Wood's second three of the game. Hit one on the side of the first half as well. Only played five minutes, though. Kudalen. Oh, that's big for Kudalen. That's exactly what he's out there for. Boy with the golden arm. Well, Russia in a 2-3 zone, collapsing, trying to shut down the American inside. Sasser. Sasser is determined to get going, and he hits it. He took his time getting going in the first half. It wasn't until 0.1 of a second remained that he managed to get on the board. We well, can't be accused of being shy because he lets it go. Pan off. <laughs> Panov three off the mark. Bounce pass. The United States trying to work it around, but turn it over. Kudalin pulls it out. Now Karasev tries to set the offense. And the touch pass. Mahaila fortunately comes up with the ball. That was pinball stuff there at the other end. That's the steal by Panov. Jimmy Oliver into the paint, banks it in, and the Americans lead by four. 
One thing the Russians have done very well is stop Oliver from shooting from the perimeter. One of the better three-point shooters in this tournament. So he was able to drive, though. Kudelin just can't find it. Mihailov keeps the ball alive. Strong rebounding by Mikhail Mihailov. Wendell Alexis has been called for the foul. Igor Kudela is hoping that somebody has flipped the switch for his jump shot because he's been off the mark. Russia trailing by four. 15 minutes to go in the game. Panov for three. Oh, that's a big shot from Panov. And Rudy Tomjanovic gets off the bench, waving, saying, we've got to spot the three-point shooters. It's something the Americans have not done tonight, and they've paid for it. Hawkins. And the defense picking up just a little bit for Russia. Well, against the inbounds in their usual 3-2 zone, or 2-3 zone. And running at the shooter, Panoff, but the Americans get the rebound. Great rebound by Michael Hawkins. Run a long way to get that one. Oliver, he Ooh, hits the three. Yes. And we saw this in the second half of the USA's game against Italy. They produced a really good three-point shooting performance in the second half. That foul given to Wendell Alexis. No, I thought he had one before we had the power cut. And that's been given as his first foul. Instead of Karasev running the show, it's Kudelin. And Karasev trying to post up Michael Hawkins down low, who is a little bit shorter. Panoff, and the Russians overpass him, throw it out of bounds. It's a good defense by the Americans. Panoff's not been at his best tonight. That was a, another turnover from him. Still no Babkov on for the Russians, and I'm beginning to wonder why. That was a very good point. He's sitting there with his top off. He's waiting to be pushed to the substitute's chair. So far, Sergei Belov has ignored him. Well, Wendell Alexis for another three. Actually, his foot was on the line, so it was a two. But there's a sense of urgency now that you feel coming from the Russians. Perhaps a little panic, a couple of turnovers. Mikhailov was shouting at Belov to do something. After he took that last rebound, he's not happy out there. Kisser in. Strong drive, but can't get it. Mihailov can't get it to go down. Not often you see Mikhailov fail to execute from there. U.S. the other way, and it's Sasser. And the United States have their biggest lead of the night. The transition is really working well. Russia are getting back very slowly. Under 12 minutes to go. We talked about Belov being unorthodox in his manners, and the man who scored 20 points for them in the first half is not on the floor and hasn't been for a while, but Kudelin finally sinks one. Kudelin may have just kept himself on the court by doing that. And the Russians are going to bring on a substitute, but it's not going to be Babkov. It's going to be Dmitry Damani. Well, stoppage in play. Foul against Russia. It's Kudelin's foul, his first one. Reaching in on Wendell Alexis. United States with a five-point edge. Russia trapping in the corner and force a turnover. So Sergei Belov's strategy pays off. They come out of the trap with a ball. Dmitry Damani has come in for the Russians. Kudelin. So Kudelin's still shaky. All the way to the other end, Oliver, and he gets swatted. 
Now Damani. Bounce pass to Karasev. The reverse layup, and it's good. Speed of Karasev when he took that one. This is the, the, the block by Mikhailov, just waiting for that. Nice little addition to the squad, Damani. Russia now sitting back in a 2-3 zone. They used this against Lithuania in the quarterfinal. It was very effective. Well, they find the hole in the zone, and Ashraf Amaya is going to make him pay. And that's the third foul of Mikhailov. Still a long time to go in this game. Jimmy King coming in for Jimmy Oliver, as you see Amaya. And that's the foul by Mikhailov. The lead back to five. And make it six. And the Babkov mystery goes on for Russia. That's that last time out, uh, Sergei Babkov was, something like Sergei Belov was having a word with Babkov and saying, don't worry, your time will come. I think his time should have come a long time ago. The guy's hot, you play him. Karasev, working behind Mihailov. And Sasser hits it. And the United States looking very positive at this point, leading by eight with nine and a half minutes to go. It was like a good team, it seems, when Kuwani Garris is out, out there on the court. He helped take him home against Italy in a very difficult quarterfinal. There's a good pass there as well to Jason Sasser. Karasev drives. Karasev draws the foul, and that is his fourth foul, Garris. So Michael Hawkins immediately will get off the bench. Hawkins averaging just over eight points a game, and there he is, the man last. of the hour, Sergei Babkov, finally comes back in. Forgotten man reappears. And about time. So Karasev goes out and takes a breather. Or rather, Damani goes out. Karasev stays in. They both look like each other. Or resemble each other. Babkov. Drives. Doesn't waste any time and makes it. So why was he sitting down? Why? Back to six. We'll have to ask Sergey that one back at the hotel. I think it's a question he's going to hear an awful lot. He'll hear an awful lot of it if this team loses. Maybe Babkov has a history of starting slow in the second half. Jimmy King to Hawkins. Shot clock down to nine. King drives, follows the shot. The Russians giving up a lot of offensive boards to the United States. I think Amaya has been called for that. Just a push on the rebound. Kailov was flirting with that fourth foul there. Nearly went over the back on the rebound after Babkov missed the shot. I just wondered what, uh, how much pressure it puts on Americans to, to beat Russia because of the old superpower rivalry. Hawkins. I don't think there's any pressure at all, to be honest. King, spin move. Amaya. And Amaya is really taking up a lot of space down low. Another impulsive foul by Sergei Panov. His third foul. And he's another player. I'm sure, I'm sure he's already had a third foul. I'm just wondering if some of these fouls have got lost in the machine over these two power cuts we've had. I think you're right. I thought that was his fourth foul. Yeah. Michael Hawkins. Jimmy King 
Alexis, little game. Sasser is swatted by Panoff, but Sasser grabs the ball, and the loose balls all ending up in the United States' hands. One of the specialities of Sergei Panoff and coming up, oh, you didn't see it, unfortunately, but the, one of the specialities of Wendell Alexis is strong offensive rebounding. He was going to eventually can that one. Kudelin to Karasev. Hawkins now for the United States. Juke over to Key. Oh, and it slams it. The Fab Fiver, Jimmy King. And that gets showtime the crowd. There. Showtime. Babkov got a good view of this one. Babkov. And Babkov slides right in there. He really looks like he's all they've got at the moment. That man Karasev, number four, you can see there, he has to step up as well. Jimmy King down to Alexis. Shot clock down to 10. Hawkins. Bounce pass inside, and King can't get it to go this time. But America are dominating inside on the boards. They lead by eight, and the Russians can't do anything about it. Although it has to be said, the Russians do have not one of their bigger lineups on the court. Hawkins swatted by Babcock. Babcock. You have to feel like Babcock is going to look to shoot. No, he kicks it out, he throws oh. it away, and Russia just not looking good at all. Oh, Jimmy King the other way! And the one player on this American team who's got some athleticism is showing us it tonight. Well, the first jam gave them a 10-point lead for the first time in the game. And now they've got another 10-point lead just after they lost it. Bounce pass to Mihailov, and he goes to the free throw line with a chance for a three-point play. Is it going to be enough? Foul is on Hawkins. Good pass by Kudelin. Russians running one of their classic clear-outs for Mikhailov. Trailing by eight, Michael Hawkins comes out, and Kwani Garris. And I think you're right. I think Kwani Garris might be the better of the two tonight. And Mihailov Ooh. misses by a mile. And Brad Miller really getting into it with Sergei Panov. And the referee is going to call a foul against Brad Miller for tripping. Well, I thought that Brad Miller was very lucky to get away with the fact that he, he uh, threw an arm at Sergei Panov. And that is inexperience. Then they go wandering down the court, and he trips him. Well, that really is pushing your luck. That is inexperience. He's a young player. Throwing the arm in itself it was uh, an ejection offense. And I think Tom Janovich right now is doing everything he can to show restraint not to bring Brad Miller out. Either that or he's upset because he feels like Panoff pushed off. But an interesting sequence cuts the lead now to seven with Panoff, who's not a good free throw shooter. If he hits this, it's down to six. Two big free throws, it's down to six. Remember that point with two minutes, 42 seconds to go. And Kornagir is fouled by Kudalen. Lon Kruger and Rudy Tomjanovic assessing the situation. Two-thirds of that American brain trust. Wendell Alexis. Juan Aguirre's. They get it to Oliver in the corner. That would have been a big one, but it doesn't really matter because the Americans are absolutely cleaning the glass. The panel's got his fourth foul. Going back to that uh, instance, here's the, the foul. Panoff is reaching in. Well, interesting, the pass comes in to Miller. He loses control. Karasev went up and made contact. And Babkov misses a three. 
The Americans lose control. The ball goes out of bounds. And the Russians are going to keep possession. And there you go. One think, hand on the line while he's in possession of the ball. Great call. I think it was a good call. I think Tom Janovic was upset at the contact. His reverse angle suggested that Karasev was elbowed by Michael Hawkins. Well, two minutes and eight seconds to go in the semifinal. USA leading 64 to 58 against the old enemy, really, it has to be said, Russia. Bounce pass to Mihailov. Time winding down. Babcock for three. Oh, Babcock. Big shot. And it's 64 61. What a huge shot. Just what they needed and when they needed it. And Tom Jonovich goes out and lights into some of his players. Feels like they're forgetting some of their responsibilities. He's really, really upset. And Babcock is the one player you would think they would not want them to get to let allow to go get open. Going to apply a little bit of token full court pressure. Now they're going to come off. I'm not sure they could they could press Michael Hawkins. But there is a shot clock. And the crowd starting to boo quite a bit. And hiss, presumably against the Americans. Hawkins for three. No good. They do get the rebound this time. Kudalin. Over to Karasev. Kudalin pulls it out. Both clocks, the right-hand corner of the screen. The States have to get a ba stop this time. Babcock for three! He's hit Babcock. again! Babcock ties the game! Russia have pulled level. 64-64. The Olympic Stadium is rocking, and the United States appear to be losing their poise, really, for the first time. Kawani Garris. Karasaf with the rebound. And for the first time in two nights, the United States are starting to show some cracks. It's beginning to crack a little bit, isn't it? 10-0 run now, the, the, the Russians are on. Those last two threes have come from Babkov. Well, you begin to think that Sergei Belov left him on the bench just to make this game an exciting finish. Well, they may have to call a crisis meeting in Washington because the Russians have the Americans on the ropes. Get on the red phone. Shot clock winds down. And the Russians ended up not getting a good shot. And the referees have caused, called something. In fact, they're going to give a timeout. For absolute chaos, the Russians, not mindful of the shot clock, and I think they've turned it over. I think they have. There's a shot clock. They'll talk about crisis meetings. They're going to be, shall we say, over at the Kremlin looking into that one. I think so. You've got to get a shot off at this stage of the game. I think uh, Beloff was wanting his club to be patient and to get a good shot. But patience is not always a virtue. And that's what we're going to see from the Russians next time. What the states are trying to do now is, is run the clock down as far as they can before they get their shot and hopefully get something out of it as well. There's the first of those Babkov threes. Well, Babkov has 30 points to lead Russia. Full level, but the United States, with just about a three-second differential, on the shot clock and game clock, can really afford to hold out for one shot. I don't think the Russians want a foul. No, I don't think so. Michael Hawkins. He's played in Greece professionally with Olympiakos. We talk about him being a little bit out of control, and Karasev, a well, master at positioning. Well, Karasev, whatever was going to happen there, Karasev was going to make the most of it. That's about the seventh foul he's drawn in this game. Vasily Karasev. Here it is again, another angle. And he did kind of throw his elbow. I don't know whether he's, he's certainly warding off.
It's exactly what Karasev wanted. You just saw the elbow there. You don't quite see it from this angle. That's the moment of contact just as he goes behind Wendell Alexis as we look at it. This is the better angle from the top. You see that there definitely is an elbow being used. Well, it's going to be interesting to hear what the coaches have to say after this game. Bell off about why he didn't play Babcock for so long, who finally has come on to score another 10 points in the second half. And Tom Janovich, who I think is perhaps a little displeased with maybe a couple of calls not going his way here at the end. But if the Russians can win this thing, I think it ha I think you have to say they've stolen it because the United States were in command. Yeah, they really uh, they've got a jail free really if they can win this one. Now full court pressure by the Americans. Has Bella? Oh, does that count? Bell Alexis' shot is after the final buzzer, and Russia have knocked out the Americans. Russia, the scoreboard finally registers. Russia have won 66-64. Sergey Panov, center court. The most unlikely situation unfolded before our eyes here. And the Americans just ushered off the court. In a game of great defense, it was decided by a guy going coast to coast, and nobody went to stop him. One of the most unbelievable finishes to a game you could imagine. Incredible, glorious moment for Russia as they go to salute their fans. Going absolutely nuts. Balov, how did he do it? What a magician. How did Babkov, who scored 30 points, a game high, and the men who are not too proud to wear the shirts for their country, the Americans, have been denied. Here goes Panoff. Now look, nobody, uh, apart from Hawkins, nobody touched him. He went virtually the whole length of the court. Well, they were afraid to foul. He did reach there. Hike Hawkins did, and Panoff. But if he's going to the basket, you, you've got to stop him. That's the first priority. Well, it looks like he almost did try to stop him and foul him, and... Uh, Hawkins did, but the, the man on the left... Well, Kawani Garris, I felt like knew he was going to make it. Maybe didn't want to give up the three-point play. But look at the joy on Bella's face. Well, he's in his second consecutive world champion. But a can that bucket a second earlier. We'll be talking about one of the most incredible finishes. Well, I really feel bad for the Americans. They really did themselves proud. They just did not have it together at the end. And I think they could go home with their heads held high, heads held high. But Russia are in the final. There's Panov's final bucket. It's decided the game, 66-64. And as if the emotion wasn't enough, the scoreboard has gone again. Would you believe? Well, unbelievable scenes. I've never. This is one of the weirdest games I've ever seen. Well, the, again, the final score, 66-64, Russia win. The, the one statistic that has to be mentioned, rebounds. The Americans absolutely dominated the boards, and the Russians somehow had that amazing run. But look at that three-point shooting. 40%, the Russians hit nine threes in this game. And the key man there, without any doubt, hitting four out of six attempts, Sergei Babkov. The Americans must have thought they'd done enough, especially the work on the boards, to get this game settled. But Babkov pulled the Russians back in, and then Panov finished them off. 